solving radical inequality notes. When restricted to the real number system, what must be true about the radicand when taking the square root? It must be greater than or equal to zero. The radicand must be greater than or equal to zero. So let's take a look at these expressions. Notice on the first one, what's the radicand for this first radical? Correct, x minus 4. x minus 4 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to 4 in order for our radicand to be greater than or equal to 0. So what we do is we take what's underneath the radical and we set it greater than or equal to 0. And now we solve for x. So we're going to add 8 on both sides. Then we divide by 5. And so x has to be greater than or equal to 8 fifths. OK, you try the next one. Pause the video and give it a try. And x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 in order for our radicand to be greater than or equal to 0, in order for this to be positive. OK, so that's the first step. When solving a radical inequality, you must first do this. Again, number one. When solving radical inequalities, you have two solving parts. First step, solve for x. Second step, solve <clears throat> for radicand greater than or equal to 0. So those are the two steps. So looking at example number one. Step one. Okay, we want to solve this for x. So to get rid of a radical, to get rid of a square root, we square it. So we're going to square the left, square the right. We get 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 16. Continue to solve, subtract 4. 2x is less than or equal to 12. So I'm going to rewrite this over here, give myself a little bit more room. Divide by 2, x is less than or equal to 6. Okay, step 2. It says solve for radicand greater than or equal to 0. So the radicand is 2x plus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So subtracting 4 on each side, we get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. <clears throat> Divide by 2. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2. OK, so this represents 
um, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So x is bigger than or equal to negative 2. So we're going to start off with negative 2 on the lower end. And on the upper end, it says that x is less than or equal to 6. So that's going to be on the upper end. So all of our solutions are in between here and including them. So we write that like this. So what this says is all the values of x from negative 2, including negative 2, to 6, including 6. Lower limit, upper limit. Okay, let's look at the next example. So step one, solve for x. So let's see, we're going to subtract 2 on both sides. Square both sides. So far, pretty easy. Add 3 on both sides. Now notice, it says that x is less than or equal to 12. So is 12 an upper limit or a lower limit? x is less than or equal to 12. 12 would be an upper limit. Okay, now let's take the radicand. Remember, back up here, the radicand must be greater than or equal to 0. greater than or equal to 0. Add 3. So we got x is greater than or equal to 3. So all the solutions are going to be bigger than or equal to 3 or less than or equal to 12. So the lower limit is 3. The upper limit is 12. And x is in between and including 3 and 12. Okay, why don't you go ahead and try this one. Pause the video and see if you can come up with your solution on this one. Okay, this is what you should have came up with. X is greater than or equal to 6. Notice there's not a, an upper limit here. It's only X is greater than or equal to 6 because the solution is all values greater than or equal to 6. And in order for our radicand to be positive, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 8. Well, 6 is greater than or equal to one, negative 1 8. So all the values greater than or equal to 6 are going to work for a solution. So go ahead and do this one for tomorrow on your own. And I will come by and check your notes. Make sure you have this problem done in order to get credit for your notes.